you just received payment for work performed on a contract. Let's take a look at Procast's automated receipt function to see how quick and easy it is to record payments in the system. We are going to run through three scenarios. Scenario 1. We received a check from GDIT in the exact amount that we invoiced. Scenario 2. We received an EFT payment from SAIC in an amount more than what we expected. Therefore, we will need to create a line for unearned revenue. Scenario 3. We received an ACH payment from the DOD in an amount less than what we expected, and we are not going to collect on the remaining difference. This will need to be written off. All three of these scenarios will be completed simultaneously through our Record Client Payments process. Step 1. Accounts Receivable Report. When recording any check or electronic receipt in Procast, the first step is to run your Accounts Receivable Report. This can be found under Accounting, Accounts Receivable, Accounts Receivable Report. On this screen, you have the option of filtering the results with multiple parameters and toggles. If you leave the parameters blank, the report will include all outstanding receivables in the 1200 accounts receivable account as of the ending report date aged on transaction date. Let's print our report to see what is outstanding. According to our initial scenario, we received three payments. Let's identify those outstanding receivables on the report. The first payment was a check from GDIT covering the exact total of our two outstanding entries. The second was an EFT payment from SAIC, which ended up being more than what we have recorded. The third and final payment was an ACH from the DOD, which was less than what we have recorded. If you are unable to find a receivable in this report, double check the sales journal to make sure an entry was created when you completed your invoicing run. If one wasn't, rerun the invoice and select Create Sales Journal Transactions to automatically record your revenue and receivable for that contract. Now that we've identified these receivables on our report, let's begin the process for creating entries in the system. Step 2. Recording Client Payments. Record Client Payments can be found under Accounting, Accounts Receivable, Record Client Payments. Completing this process will create cash receipt journal transactions to relieve the outstanding receivables from our report and record the amount of cash received in our bank account. By default, this screen should contain the same information that was on the AR report. If it does not, select the search button to populate all outstanding receivables for the default receivable account range. You can limit this information by modifying any of the parameters at the top or sort and filter it using the column headers below. Let's sort the data by task so that the rows are listed in ascending project order. Now, let's select the outstanding receivables that we have received payment for. All columns with dark gray backgrounds are read-only fields to help us determine which rows should be selected. We can match up the client, task, and invoice number with the payments we received to select the right ones. Now that the appropriate rows have been selected, let's determine how much we've received versus how much we were expecting and what to do with the differences. Three columns will help with this decision-making process. Invoice amount is the receivable amount we originally recorded on our sales journal. Open amount is how much of that original receivable still needs to be collected. If we had received partial payment in the past, this number will be less than the invoice amount. Payment amount is how much we received today. 
This will default to the open amount, but should be modified to how much we actually received. For scenario one, we received the exact amount expected. Therefore, no payments need to be modified. However, scenarios two and three will require changes. You'll notice as I change these values, the remaining column automatically updated to reflect the difference in payment. From here, we can determine what to do with these differences. For scenario two, we are going to reclass the difference to an unearned revenue account. For scenario three, we are going to write off the remaining amount to bad debt. The accounts used will be determined on the next screen. Once all of our receivables have been selected, we can double check our work using the totals at the bottom of the screen. If everything checks out, select Next to continue. Step three, finalizing the entries. To finalize the receivables we've selected, there are two brief screens to complete. The first screen will list out the accounts we want to use for the entries. These three accounts, cash, write-off, and reclass, will default to what's listed on our company's default accounts form. This menu can be found by navigating to Setup, Account Structure, Default Accounts. The accounts we're going to use for our three scenarios are a checking account for cash, a bad debt expense for the write-off amount, and an advances from customers for unearned revenue. Additionally, we are going to split these three payments into one transaction for each client. You want to separate transactions per bank deposit so that the entries evenly line up with your bank statements. Because we were paid with a check, ACH, and EFT payment, separating the entries will lead to an easier reconciliation process. If we click Next again, we will see a confirmation screen for what the journal entries will look like. You can add line descriptions as needed and use the cash totals at the bottom to verify that nothing was missed. If everything is correct, select the Create button at the bottom to create the entries. At this point, the client payment process has been completed. We can navigate over to the Cash Receipts Journal to see our three resulting entries. If any modifications need to be made, they can be done in this journal. Thanks for taking the time to learn the recording client payments process.